today's program. Just one quick reminder, if you're having any problems with popping or cracking or breaking in your sound quality, if you're listening through computer speakers, I'd highly recommend you go ahead and try jumping on via telephone. Generally, these programs will get the best quality uh, sound if you go ahead and use your phone system to get logged in. All right, well, welcome to the next installment of the Maximum, uh, Excel, uh, Maximum Performance Webinar Series presented by Maximum Acceleration Coaching Company. Uh, my name is Eric Genesco, and I have the great privilege and honor today of introducing a good friend and colleague of mine who I've uh, a mentor of mine in my early days of career and, uh, and has become a great friend over the years. Uh, you know, when, when we originally started this series back in October, our original mission and mission was to provide extremely high quality content from the thought leaders in the industry, the people who made a difference in this industry for years and develop a community of learning, uh, a community of people who come together on a regular basis to learn how we can all improve our businesses together. And I can't think of a single person better who's been of more value to this industry than the gentleman I have the great privilege and honor of introducing right now, Mr. Greg Frost. Uh, Welcome to the call, and uh, you know, for those of you who haven't had the opportunity to meet Greg or to hear him present, uh, you know, Greg holds the distinction of being the first billion-dollar originator for more than 15 years. Produced or for uh, well, Greg, but what was the numbers on it? And it was something like over 10,000 loans in 15 years. So if you guys do the math on that. It was well over 60 loans a month consistently for years and years and years on end. Uh, recently, uh, Greg has become a student of the Dr. Cialdini Psychology of Influence study. Uh, as I've gone on to write a couple of different books, most recent title of which is called Mastering the Art of Success. They co-authored with uh, some guys you might know, Mark Victor Hansen and Jack Canfield, as well as uh, popular speaker Les Brown. The three of these guys got together uh, to write a book along with Greg, and that book is available. If you're interested in copies, we'll tell you a little bit more how to get a hold of that at the end of the day. But today's program is really focused on what Greg learned and applied as to all of the things that he had done for years and years and years that worked. but he never really understood why. Well, he had the opportunity to study these principles that were refined and perfected uh, by a Dr. Robert Cialdini at Arizona State University. Um, and now he is here with us today to share these ideas and concepts for how we can apply these powerful principles to taking our mortgage business to the next level. So with that, Greg, I'm going to turn it over to you. You're going to take us through a wonderful journey today, and I'm putting you in the driver's seat. Does that sound OK? Sounds great. Okay, well, thanks for tuning in, everybody. Um, for those of you that are sitting in the Midwest and freezing your tails off, I want you to know I'm looking out my window in Maui right now. It's uh, 6 a.m. here, and the sun's just coming up, and it's going to be a beautiful day. So if you don't feel bad now, uh, just, just wait a minute. I'll tell you some more as the sun comes up, I'll tell you how beautiful it is here. But anyway, uh, Eric asked me, to, asked me to join in this morning, and I was happy to do it. We go back a long way, and Eric and I met each other at Loan Toolbox, where I was a content provider and uh, worked with my friend Tim Brahim and Rich Katz there to provide the tools that that uh, that we did at the Loan Toolbox to help people organize their business and, and uh, improve their business. And uh, Eric and I, you know, saw it eye right away and and uh, started sharing, and it's been a very nice relationship that we've had over the years. So I'm very happy to participate in this with with him and for you. You know, I've always believed in the in the power of sharing. You know, sharing is a biblical is a biblical uh, uh, philosophy. You know, you you may have heard it. You know, when you were kids, you know, cast your bread upon the water; it will be returned to you tenfold. There are several several uh, references to sharing and giving and in the Bible, and uh, I've always believed in them. And I've always found that the more I gave, the more I got. And we're simply going to talk about, that's one of the principles we're going to talk about this morning. So I'm real happy to be here, I'm real happy to be on the call. Um, years ago, 2007, I was um, working with Tim Brahim at, uh, at our sales at our uh, uh, business planning event that we held in Las Vegas. And uh, 
Tim had uh, hired this fellow by the name of Dr. Robert Cialdini to come in. He's a social, social scientist. A psycho, he's a PhD in psychology at Arizona State University. He's written several books on the psychology of persuasion and ethical influence. And, and his studies um, uh, you know, are vast and very well received in the scientific community. Uh, he's standing on stage, and I'm, uh, I'm in the green room. Of course, we've got, a, we've got a direct feed from the stage to the green room, and I'm watching him, and I'm, I'm stunned, shocked, and amazed. He, uh, he's standing up there talking about the social principles of influence, and he was step by step by step validating the, the tactics that I had employed for some time in building my business, and he was validating the science behind why the tactics worked. You know, you, you, in our business, you, you, you get to where you start doing things and you see that they work and then you try something else and you see that it works. Try something else, it doesn't work, so you discard it. You try something else, it works, you adopt it. And it's just a, it was a, you know, for me anyway, and I'm sure it's the same for you, it's just kind of a trial and error, trial and error, trial and error basis. Well, over the years, I've fortunately had more trials and successes and errors and, you know, I, I had a, very, very lucrative origination career. But my, my biggest challenge, and, and the challenge for you top originators out there, and those of you who want to be top originators, and I'm going to address it to both of you, but for those of you that are top originators, you know, I'm 63 years old. I'm going to be 64 next month. How do you, uh, how do you continue on in your business, and how do you how can you transfer your knowledge, your, your understanding of the business, how can you transfer it to, to, um, to other people, you know, your surrogates? How can you take what helped you become so successful in your marketplace and transfer it to your surrogates? And that's, for those of us, for a lot of my friends in the business who are, who are, who are at my age group, you know, had very good and successful origination careers, how do you take this this uh, knowledge and understanding and these systems, strategies, and tactics that you have employed, and how do you train new people to adopt them and carry on for you? And for those of you that are attempting to, you know, climb the, the mountain, how can you use these strategies and use these tactics to adopt? Well, uh, I think I think one of the ways to do it is to understand the science behind what causes people to agree with you. Okay, in the in the psychology of, per, of persuasion, psychology of compliance, how do you get people to comply with you? Okay, just what are the factors that cause one person to say yes to another person? Okay, and there are there are psychological principles which which cause one person to say yes to another person more times than not. And if you can understand some of these psychological principles, you can better craft your approach in your marketplace. And the way you're acting in your marketplace, and the way you're asking for business in your marketplace, to create a scenario by which you're you're going to be more inclined to get a yes, more inclined to get agreement, and there it takes a little study, it takes a little planning, a little understanding, but it really makes sense. Okay, I I, I just can't I can't emphatically say how much sense it makes. I I just it it was like a light going on for me, and here I've been doing this for. A long time. All right. This is just 2007 that I that I happened across this man and his teachings. I've been originating long since 19 heck since 1972 since getting out of college. Doing a pretty good job of it. This helped me, and, and what it really helped me to do is be able to transfer my success to others and maintain levels of success for those that are in my organization and assist them in attaining levels of success, which have helped many of them earn a very good living. And, uh, and hopefully, you know, I'll be able to help you as well. All right, one of the first things that we need to understand about human nature is the, is the word reciprocity, reciprocation. Uh, write down the word reciprocity and Google it and go look at it in the dictionary and see what it says about reciprocity. And what I want you to understand is we human beings, we human beings are all susceptible to reciprocity. It's a basic, innate human nature. Reciprocity is what separates us from the other mammals. 
it's, it's, it's what helped us create society. It's a basic foundation of society. And, and the, the principle of re reciprocity, we had to sum it up in just a few words. It's, it's the give and the take and the take and the take. And, and what I mean by that is by being the first to give, you are guaranteeing yourself to be a recipient. You're, you give and you're going to be able to take. You know, life is a circle, and you've heard that for years and years. And it always comes back to you. Well, reciprocity is part of that life circle. Be the first to give. Give without question. Give without strings attached. Give something of value. Give unexpectedly. And you will make an impression uh, that's long-lasting. And you will eventually be the recipient of reciprocity. Um, in our business, uh, it, it's hard to understand uh, what can you give. I mean, in our business, Business, you know, back in the days when I began originating, you could be very, uh, you could be very generous to to referral partners. You could be very generous to clients. Now you can't. You get those, you get those laws of RESPA. You know, you've got, you got to, you can't, you can't do this. You can't do that. I adapted to that with my with my um, feelings towards reciprocity, and I I tried to bring value to my referral partners that was something other than than a monetary. I tried to, in fact, in fact, the thing that I ended up doing was I ended up attending several sales seminars on a regular basis from the top real estate sales trainers in the country. I would go see Mike Ferry and Walter Sanford and Floyd Whitman. I'd buy all their tapes. I'm dating myself now. I'd buy their cassette tapes. I would listen to them. I'd buy their workbooks. And I would duplicate certain portions of their workbooks and their tapes, and I would provide my local realtors with that educational information. And I would take them to breakfast, and I would take them to lunch, and I would bring a, a leaflet from one of the training manuals, and I would go over it with them. And I would become their instructor. It got, it, I refined it to the point where I wasn't just meeting with them one-on-one, -on -one, but I was actually got groups together, well, got an initial group together where I invited seven or eight of them to have lunch with me, and I had handout material with fill-in-the-blanks training, and I suggested to them that I just wanted to expose them to this wonderful training. I'd, I'd gone to see Floyd Wickman, or I'd gone to see Mike Carey or Walter Sanford. I'd gotten this training, and here it is, and I just wanted to share it with them. And so I'd buy them lunch. Well, I got to the point where I started individually one-on-one, -on -one, and I started inviting groups together because I simply didn't have enough days in the week to spread the information around as much as I wanted to. So I'd invite, invite uh, six or seven of them to lunch, and I'd, I'd host the lunch, and we'd just sit around. Actually, we sat at a Japanese restaurant. You know those restaurants where you go and you sit down at the table where you're kind of sitting on the floor around the table, and I, it was called Mikado, and I, I invited them there. Well, these things got so popular that some of the agents said, could I bring somebody with me? Would you mind if I brought it? There's another agent in my office that I think would really enjoy this. Got to the point where I had, I had, and I limited, I finally limited it to 12 because that's all that would sit around the table at Mikado. Got to three, uh, three lunches a month. First week, second week, third week of the month. I never did lunches the fourth week of the month because that's closing week, right? End of the month, we don't do that. Um, and, and I had, you know, I had the best part of 35, 36 people, real estate agents that would all come together from different offices, competitors, and I'd sit down and I'd train them. And, and I used education. Now, that was an investment for me because I, I practice my trade in Albuquerque, New Mexico. It's a very small market. Very few trainers come to Albuquerque, okay, and especially, um, you know, between uh, 85 and 2000, you know, very few trainers came to Albuquerque. So I'd have to get on a plane, go to Denver, or go to Phoenix, or go to Dallas, or go to LA, and attend these seminars. And back in those days, there was no internet. So you got on people's mailing lists, and you found out, and they, and they traded mailing lists. Various trainers would trade mailing lists among themselves. So you'd get on somebody else's mailing list. And, and they, they'd invite you to these things. And so I'd fly out. I'd check into a hotel and make a financial investment. I, I, I felt I felt that I needed to invest in something like that about every 90 days. So about every 90 days, I was heading someplace for two or three days, and I was uh, attending a seminar, and I'd buy all the stuff that they sold and come back and listen to it and, and share it with the, with the realtors in my marketplace. 
got to the point where I became the, the trainer. You know, in, in real estate companies, there's there are sales managers, but there are very few sales trainers. So what ended up happening was I was providing sales training to realtors. And it got to the point where at one time in my career, I got a call from one of my referral partner realtors. And he said, hey, he says, I'd like to take you to lunch for a change. You're always taking us to breakfast and lunch. He said, I'd, I'd like to take you to lunch. I said, okay. So I show up at this lunch, and there's five of them there from three different real estate offices. And there's five of them there. And uh, they said, uh, they kind of were smirky, had a little smile on their face. And, they, and I said, what's going on? And they said, well, we've got a proposal for you. We'd like to know if you'd like to open a real estate company because we'd like to work for you. <laughs> and they wanted me to, to open a real estate company and train. So we think we can hire a bunch of people, et cetera, et cetera. Well, uh, to make a long story short, uh, I now have a financial interest in three different real estate companies, and they've all approached me. I've never approached any of them. They've all come to me and, and asked me if I would invest in their real estate companies and if I wouldn't provide uh, sales training to their agents. And so I'm in, I'm in the marketplace right now in three different companies, and I found this is a great way for me as I cycled uh, out of personal originations and into creating a division. You know, we now operate in six states. Uh, I found it a great way for me to put surrogates in those real estate companies. And so I acquire financial interest in the real estate company. I put loan officer surrogates in there who work the same that work the same principles that I do uh, or else. <laughs> and and uh, it's just grown and, and and it's grown by being this person that provided value to these real estate agents in the form of education and which was which was uh, legal under rest of the laws, okay, and and so it 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 worked for me, and it can work for you. And I just tell you, um, become a become an educator uh, within the real estate community of of real estate sales training, and you can do that simply by going and attending these national events. Mike Ferry has a super national super star event, uh, Walter has one, Floyd has one. You go to these things, and now I go just once a year and get their, get their new stuff, you know. I don't go quarterly. Well, it ends up quarterly because they, they all do them at different times of the year. But anyway, um, bring value, be the first to give, give freely, and reciprocity will happen. People are just, just absolutely driven to respond to you when you, when you give. Um, and, and just think about this, you know, when I was a kid, you know, I remember my mom, when, when we would go places, go visit people, she always take something. She never went empty-handed. You know, that, that's, I don't know, I don't know if that's still the case, but for the most part, when, if I go to somebody's house, I always take something. Now it's, it used to be you take a covered dish back in the old days, I'm showing my age, you know, the, the mom would bring some dish, you know, some casserole or something, or some dessert or something. Now it's wine, and everybody brings a bottle of wine. It's really easy to bring a bottle of wine. So it's still it's still in vogue to bring something. Well, well it's always very well very well received, and people people when they come back to your house, they usually bring something. They don't show up empty-handed. You know, I I can't believe the holidays are especially you know people reciprocate. Here's a holiday. Here's a, here's a, here's a validation. Um, Cialdini did a study. Robert Cialdini, the psychologist, that I said he. He does a study, right? And he sends out a bunch of Christmas cards to people he doesn't know. Right? Has this ever happened to you? You get a Christmas card and you read and go, who the hell are these people? Well, right after you say who the hell are these people, you sit down and you send them back a Christmas card, don't you? And, and that's what Cialdini proved. 99% uh, of the people, he sent out 100 Christmas cards to people he didn't know, 99% of the people sent a Christmas card back. Why? You just feel compelled to reciprocate. It's just this innate thing. So tap into that, okay? Tap into reciprocity. Be a giver. And what will end up happening is it will come back to you. You know, it will come back to you, you know, like I said, cast your bread upon the waters, it will come back to you tenfold. All right? And it will. Continue to give, and reciprocity will work for you. Give something of value. I give education, okay? And you can give education to it. It's amazing. It's easy, and you become. A, you also tap into another 
another uh, when you when you give education, you tap into another um, uh, one of the one of the power uh, persuasive psycho psychological principles, which is authority. And when you can establish yourself as an authority in somebody's life and in their business, you uh, you um, establish yourself. You have great credentials. And so so what I did, I didn't knowingly do it, but what I was really doing was I was I was giving education. And by virtue of sharing this education, being the focal point of the education, I was tapping into another social principle called authority. When you can have authority in somebody's life, and when they perceive you that, that as a person of authority, you then you then um, uh, gain greater stature, and they come to rely on you. And so, what I did with my with my educational approach was I became authority an authority with regard to sales training for the realtors and referral partners that I was doing business with, and they saw me in a different light now. Okay, All of a sudden, I've taken this relationship past me trying to sell them something, me trying to, me trying to convince them of something, and, and, I'm, and now I'm in the relationship of being their mentor, Okay, because I'm bringing them information that they didn't know, and I'm sharing it with them freely, and I'm giving it with them freely. So now all of a sudden, as I trigger reciprocity, by virtue of me giving these things, I am also triggering the principle of authority where my stature and my status is growing in their eyes. So now they're doing business with somebody that they not only feel compelled to do business with because I've been so giving, but they also want to do business with because I seem so smart, because I've, I've brought all of this educational information to them. And, and, they're, and they're, they're appreciative, but they're also uh, they're also respectful, okay? They're also respectful of, of what I've brought to the table. And they start seeing me in the light of, of, the, of a trainer now, of a mentor now. And when you can get somebody to do that, you've bridged a gap. You know, you, you've created, a, you've created a, a relationship. We all talk about relationship selling. Uh, we all talk about building relationships. We all, you know, the, the classic adage of the loan officer is, oh, I can't stand doing business with that realtor because you're only as good as your last deal. Well, you're only as good as your last deal if you have a transactional-based relationship. If the only point of your relationship is the transaction, then you have a transactional-based relationship, and surely you're only as good as your last deal. You're only as good as your last transaction if you have a transactional-based relationship. But what I've always tried to do is do business with my friends and make friends of the of the people with whom I do business. And in that regard, I try to develop a deeper relationship. So by, by being the first to give, and by triggering reciprocity, and by giving something of value, by giving education, I trigger authority, and I become an authority figure in their lives and in their businesses. I now have deepened that relationship tremendously. So when I've got a bad deal with these people, if I've got a deal that's just, you know, you know got whiskers on it, and you, you're going, oh, man, this is a hairy deal. I'm really having problems with it. We're not going to close on time. This is happening, and that's happening. And I guarantee you, when you do the volume of business that I have over the years, that, ha that stuff happens every month, okay? That stuff happens every month. Um, we're, you've got to have a deeper relationship than just a transactional relationship. If, if your relationship in those instances is just a transactional relationship, you've lost the game. Okay, you, they have to know you're their friend. They have to know you're 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 adept at what you do. They have to know you're a consummate professional, and they have to have known these things by virtue of what you brought to the table, so that they can say they'll believe you. A when you're candid with them about why this deal is going going south, why it's not working like you want it to work. They'll believe you, and they'll understand that, well, this guy's my friend. We have a deep relationship. I know he's trying his hardest for me. I know he's doing everything he can possibly do for me. And the way you build that understanding in that relationship is by, is by practicing uh, reciprocity, by practicing what being the first to give, and by creating authority for yourself. All right? A consensus, social proof. Another thing that I was tapping into that I didn't realize is by having my, my – uh, mentoring luncheons, you know, I call them my success partners luncheons. And you'll notice if any of you are buying top of mind networks, you know it's old Mark Green has borrowed on that. He goes, Partners in success. And that's Mark's loving way of, of taking my success partners idea and and, uh, and duplicating it. Um, at any rate, think about this for a second. When you're doing those lunches and you're doing those 
and you've got eight or ten or twelve different realtors sitting around from eight or ten or twelve different real estate offices and they're all sitting around lunch and now we're ordering lunch, everybody eats the same thing. It's a Japanese they have these big treasure boats that were just fabulous. I wish that place hadn't gone out of business because they were delicious. At any rate, everybody's eating, you know, they're they're all you know communally eating and I'm training, communally training, right? And what what's happening now? They're looking across the table and they go, Oh gee, you know that's a real that's one of the top producers in Albuquerque. That's another one of the top producers in Albuquerque. Gee, Greg does business with some of the top producers in Albuquerque. Look at these are people. In some cases, some of these agents around the table really wanted to meet these other agents and never thought they never never met them, and they were in awe of some of these other agents. And I used to set it up that way. Let me tell you, I was very careful how I, the three different luncheons that it grew into. I always had a couple of big hitters at each luncheon so that everyone else would see the fact that I was doing business with these big producers, okay? And so, you know, you want to be smart about it. But, but um, uh, you know, con consistency, uh, consensus, you know, social proof. I was proving socially that I was running with the, with the big players. And that's always kind of sexy to the players that aren't big players. So understand that social proof. Consensus by letting people know testimonials, letting people know that the top agents in town said something nice about you. I put out flyers every month through the MLS flyer distribution service, so that it goes to all the realtors in our marketplace. And I'll, I put out flyers with testimonials from realtors about my loan officers. Every one of my loan officers has their picture on the flyer, and there's a realtor testimonial for every single one of the of my loan officers so that everybody in my marketplace today sees that these other realtors were A, were doing business with them and B, they're happy with it. Well, in my own personal production, A, they were sitting around the table, B, they were talking They were talking about business and they were, it's kind of interesting when you get a bunch of salespeople around and, you, and you're buying them lunch and you're, you've got them all in a, around a table, they kind of put their sales cap on and they kind of know why they're there and they end up doing a lot of, a lot of nice testimonials for you around the table and being very thankful and commenting on a job well done here, a job well done there. Everybody wants to be the first to, or the last, to say something nice about you. And that's what comes into another, another social principle of, of persuasive psychology, which is consistency. Uh, everybody wants to believe that they made the right decision. So when you've got them all sitting around a table doing, doing like I did, there's social proof. When you've got flyers going out at the MLS with these testimonials from these various realtors in town, social proof. Social proof that each of them has made the right decision in choosing you as their mortgage referral partner. Okay, so you want to constantly provide them with social proof, and one of the best ways to do that is testimonials or getting them all together. Okay, one of the things we're doing now, my son, uh, Greg Frost Jr., has joined me in my business, and he's a He's in charge of community relations and social media and all that funky stuff that the young people know that I don't know. And one of the things we're doing is we're, we've rented a tour bus. We've got this guy that's got these 20-passenger uh, these, uh, 20 vans in town, and he runs them up and down the hot, the hot places in town on Fridays and Saturday nights and takes people from bar to bar and club to club. And, and these vans are sit idle during the day, okay? So we've cut a deal with a couple of title insurance companies, and we're going to start sponsoring realtor tours. And uh, we're, we're, we're providing a van for the tour. We're renting it to this van guy and we're the company, and we're providing a tour, and, uh, and uh, we're taking we're, All the realtors are coming to a particular area where the tour is going to be. They park their cars, they jump in our van, and we do the morning tours. So in New Mexico, we're big, we're big proponents of breakfast burritos. So we, everybody's got a breakfast burrito in a frost mortgage bag with a frost mortgage napkin with a frost mortgage wrapped bottle of water. And we go off on the tour, and then we take them around in these vans. So with gas prices being the way they are, they don't have to, they don't have to use their own gas. We've got one of our loan officers on every tour. And so they get to meet these people and get to know new realtors. So there's usually eight or ten or twelve realtors. The van seats twenty, so it's very spacious, very nice, and they love it because they just go to one central location and they don't have to drive around and get lost and all kinds of stuff like that. 
Now, now we just cut a deal with the guy to wrap the van. So it's going to be a big Frost Mortgage van. We're wrapping it with the Frost Mortgage you know, logo and stuff, and uh, stylized version of everything. So, so what are we doing? We're 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 providing consistency. When those agents are on the van, they're on the tour with us. We're on with the loan officer. They don't realize that the loan officer doesn't know everybody on the tour. They just know that they're on a Frost Mortgage wrapped van, working with Stuart Title or, or, or um, First American Title to take them around and show them listings and look at all these other people that are on this van, this Frost Mortgage van. We're, we're tapping into another social influence trigger, which is called uh, consistency. Okay, so we've got consensus, we've got consistency, we've got authority, we've got reciprocity, okay, and uh, liking and scarcity. How do, we, how do we do scarcity? Well, on that van, only, only so many people can go on that van. We'll only let so many people on each time. Okay, at my, at my luncheons, there, there was only 12 people at the luncheon. Okay, no, no one else could come. Okay, it was, it was it was maxed out at twelve, and and it was very interesting. Let me tell you how I worked it. A lot of times you get an agent to, and, and I always believe in every week keeping track. I had a I had a sheet and it said uh, realtors, and I and I listed every realtor that I felt in my heart was one of my success partners, one of my referral partners. I listed their name every week, week of. Uh, uh, week of uh, February 10th, okay? And I put pre-quals, call them for pre-quals, and call them for application. And every single week, I would note how many pre-quals I got, who I got them from, and how many applications I got, who I got them from. And most importantly, who I didn't get them from, okay? And I would carry these statistics over week by week by week, and pretty soon, you'd see patterns develop. You'd see some of the realtors you were seeing pre-quals and asking them all the time. Some of them not as prolific but regular. And then some of them goose egg, goose egg, goose egg. And so what I would do, because I had these weekly, these monthly success partners luncheons, and, and I would take, you know, also I would take um, realtors to breakfast and lunch all the time uh, in addition to that. Well, what happened was if I saw goose egg, goose egg, goose egg, I would uh, not invite that person to a success partner luncheon, okay? And uh, I just would, I just wouldn't invite them. And what, the interesting thing that would happen was, was somebody in their office who was already going was going, you know, along with them. They used to come together, right? Well, if somebody in their office would say, "Are you going to Greg's success partner luncheon on Tuesday?" And the other person who I had not invited said, "Well, no, I wasn't. I didn't know about." It. And the other person said, "Yeah, well, it's Tuesday. You want to ride over together?" Well, I, I, I didn't know about. It. Uh, better give Greg a call. So give Greg a call. So they call me. And I said, well, Sally, I said, uh, I'm sorry. I said, uh, let, let me check here. Hold on a second. So I'd, I'd put the phone on hold, and I'd count 1,001 and 1,002, and I'd count to 1,010, and I'd come back on, and I'd say, Sally, you know what? I said, I apologize. I said, in my system, uh, it's, it's, it's automated, and uh, if you haven't referred me a, a um, borrower in 60 days, you automatically drop off the, the success partners luncheon list. I'll tell you what, what please come. I want you to come and, and you'll be riding over with Kathy, won't you? Yeah, okay. I want you to come and I'm I'm, I'm sorry for that. I'll chat with you when you get there. Okay, well I know that it's Sally, I'm gonna go up and say hello and I'm gonna greet her very warmly so she doesn't feel bad. And then I say, Sally, how about um, how about you and I getting together for breakfast or lunch uh, later on in the week? So then I take her to breakfast or lunch and then I say, you know Sally the when, when we sit down, the first thing I say, you, you know, Sally, I, I think the first thing I need to say to you is, is that I'm, I apologize, and I'm very, I'm very sorry for whatever I did or didn't do that has caused you to stop referring me to your clients. And of course, Sally goes, wait a minute, no, no, it's da, 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 you know, and makes all kinds of excuses. And, and the long story short is, I, I, I use that basically to get Sally back in line. And let her know that I know, let her know that I keep score, let her know that I know she hasn't referred anybody to me in two months, let her know that I really want her business, make it as, be as humble as I possibly can, I apologize to her for whatever I did wrong. And of course, then I put her on the defensive, you know, to where she feels she feels she offended me, and she's got to make it right, and I trigger reciprocity all over again, okay? 
And so, so that's one of the ways that, that I would create a situation of scarcity by simply leaving them off of an activity, leaving them off of, of something that they were used to doing, um, create scarcity in some way that, that, the, that it was compelling for them to change their ways with me and get back in the group. Okay, they wanted to have the consensus. They wanted to have the consistency. They wanted the reciprocity. They just they just needed to get back on board, and that was the way that I used to use to get them back on board. The final principle is liking. The final principle of, of um, persuasive psychology that Cialdini teaches is liking. And you know the principle is this: if people do business with people like them. Okay, uh, they they. We all like to do business with people like us. And so one of the things that we want to do when we're getting to know somebody is to, is to ask lots of questions and find out how many different points of mutual interest can you find. I, I've always claimed that I could take somebody out of an audience at any one of my seminars and ask them five questions and we'd find somebody we knew, some place we'd been, some school we mutually attended, some sports team we mutually liked. We would find something in common. And, and it's, it's all a function of finding out about your people. When you're, when you're getting to know somebody, you want to ask lots of questions about them. They are their most favorite subject and their most favorite topic. And so when you're, I, I've always been a proponent of breakfast and lunches. I would always use that. I, I felt you break bread with somebody, you break down barriers. You break down barriers with every piece of bread you break with somebody. And one of the things you want to do is you break down barriers is you want to get to know these people. So you want to interview them. You want to, you want to know who they are, where they come from. And I, I can sit down with, with anybody, and I believe this, within five questions, I can find some commonality. All right? And it's very important to find commonality when you're in sales because people like to do business with people like them. Okay? So if you can find something that you have in common, something, some, any little thing, that you can expand upon and expound upon, you're going to have a much better chance of, of convincing that person to give you a try. Okay, so we like to do business with people like us. So in summary, reciprocity is a human dynamic that runs deep in every single one of us, unless you're just an awful person. And if, who wants to do business with awful people? Okay, so understand that there might be some awful people out there that would reciprocity simply doesn't work with, some greedy, stingy, awful person. And guess what? You don't want to do business with them anyway. Okay? Consistency. Social influence. People want to believe that they made the right decision in doing business with you. So you want to continue to give them social proof. Okay? Social influence. And that's, uh, and that's you, can, you can handle that with testimonials. You can handle that with, with, um, with, a, with a couple of, with consensus, get multiple people together. And let other people know who you're who you're doing business with and who are doing business with you. Um, that works for consensus as well. Uh, testimonials are great for consensus. Liking, find out and find commonality with people. You've got commonality. You know, you've heard what what's that thing that went on? Over, well, it's six steps away or three steps away from being close to people. It's even less than that. You're going to find commonality. Commonality, and you you just have to interview these people and find out. How, how you're the same, how you're similar others, okay? And then authority, you know, bring it, bring it to your marketplace. You become the authority, not just with mortgage information, but with general sales information. These realtors don't have any sales training. They go to real estate school. They teach nothing but selling, nothing about selling in real estate school. We're now teaching through the Kaplan Real Estate School, uh, Dolores Garcia and I, we're, we're putting together, we, we put together a, a lunch and learn about how to use your local MLS statistics to, to focus on exactly what you need to be doing in your marketplace to achieve your financial goals. And we're basically, this is a sales course, a, a two-hour sales, little sales training that we're teaching brand new newbie realtors who are just coming out of real estate school. And we want to try to get it accredited for for uh, continuing education hours, because that's so important. But I'm going to tell you something. Uh, help these people. Help them learn sales skills. You go attend some of the best sales trainers. Mike Ferry is a great one. Go go to Mike Ferry Superstar Retreat in Las Vegas. You, you want to go to Las Vegas anyway. It's a great retreat to go to, and you'll love it. Okay. Uh, I'm getting beeped here. 
Am I off the line? I'll tell you what, though. Nope, you're still on the line, Greg. Can you hear me? Greg, can you hear me? Mr. Greg, can you hear me all right? I am guessing that uh, nobody can hear me because I sound like I'm talking to myself. Um, okay, so apparently we're having some audio difficulties. Uh, Mr. Greg, can you hear me all right? Hi, folks. Can you hear me all right? If, those, if somebody can just uh, hit the chat or the Q&A and let me know if you can hear me. Oh, okay. Uh, people can hear me. Um, Greg, can you hear me? Not sure if Greg's phone system went down. Uh, I'll tell you what, folks, uh, as we're moving through the conversation here, Greg has shared a wonderful bit of information. Uh, if Greg gets to jump back in, uh, I know he'll be working on trying to get back into us as quick as possible so we can get into the Q&A section. Uh, but it's actually about a bit... Uh, perfect time to break uh, just because we are about to head into the Q&A section of the call anyway. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try and address a couple of the call questions that, uh, that were addressed just real quickly as we're waiting for Mr. Greg to get back online here. Uh, a couple of things, though, that I did want to highlight. Uh, and by the way, guys, go ahead and post your questions. I don't know if we'll be able to get Greg back on the line or not. If not, um, I'll tell you that our coaching team and Greg will be following up with all of the questions that are posted in the Q&A section of today's webinar platform. We'll download a log of all the, the uh, questions that are asked here and make sure we get that stuff back to you um, as, you know, as Greg is trying to get back on the line here. Uh, even if he doesn't, though, make sure you go ahead and post your questions into that Q&A section of the webinar so that we can go ahead and uh, get rolling. Um, there were a couple of questions asked that uh, that I'm going to have to defer to Greg. Um, some of the questions about the MLS uh, flyers that he uses and how does he give that. Um, but a couple of things that I want you all to hear. All of these are concepts that are proven, and they're all based on the psychology of how people think and react, how we as humans make decisions. And, and that's what the fundamental elements of all of these are. If you've read the book, Influence Science and Practice by Dr. Robert Cialdini, is where most of these concepts actually come from. What they have literally done is spent at the University of Arizona and through uh, Dr. Cialdini's chairmanship has actually done hands-on research studies for the last 25 plus years in the world of influence psychology, marketing psychology. It's, it's you know, the study of how people make buying decisions. And that's where all of these, a lot of these ideas and concepts come from. There hey, were Eric. questions that were, yes, Mr. Greg, you're back online. I'm back, and I apologize. Awesome. I don't know when you lost, when I lost you. Uh, right about the time you were finishing up with uh, just the, the story about the, the real estate training and that stuff. Um, since it was a good break point anyway, I went ahead and jumped into Q&A mode for us, Greg. Uh, so if you're all right, can I pepper you with a couple of questions? Oh, you bet. Okay. Well, one of the, one of the ones that uh, came up here in uh, just the first part of the discussions and conversations, uh, a really good question was posted. The, the flyers you post in the MLS, um, can you give us an example of um, kind of the layout and format of those flyers, what kind of information is in them, and how does that tie to these principles of influence? Sure. Uh, it's a long legal slick paper flyer. I like to do slick paper because it gets noticed in, in with, uh, along the other, among the other flyers. And it's got a, I've got eight loan officers in the marketplace, so each loan officer has their, one has their picture to the left, the one below would have a picture to the right, left, right, left, right, and then there's a testimonial from a realtor in the marketplace. So uh, the, it, it says, uh, "Here's what your your uh, here's what your um, realtor uh, something are saying about our loan officers. You know, here's here's what here's what you all are saying about our loan officers. So that it might, it would have a picture of Luke Gutierrez, and then it would say, "Luke's done a great job. He gave me gave me." constant communication on the loan. I really appreciate his service and then say a you know Adrian sample from Cola Banker. And then the next one would have a picture of the loan officer over to the right and it'd have the quote to the left. 
and it would say, you know, Dolores Garcia always calls me back. She's always right there when I need her. Uh, thanks, Dolores. And this is, you know, uh, uh, Alice uh, Smart from Pargin Real Estate. And then so so there'd just be a long legal, and it'd be lo loan officer picture left, loan officer picture right, loan officer picture left, loan officer picture right. Quote, and uh, it's red, white, and blue. So the and I, the quotes are all in reverse white. And if, if somebody wants to see what it looks like, just email me, and we'll send them a copy of it. Okay. Um, all right. So the next question that I had, um, you, you were during the section you were talking about the law of consensus, um, and you talked about you know the, the, the younger agents, the not so experienced agents, the not star producer agents, want to be around the star producer agents to learn from them. Uh, what actual impact does that have on the you know, and, and what do you see happening to the this I guess the, the, the well, phrases, uh, the speed of reciprocity or the speed of uh, how quickly those agents start to come up to speed when they're able to associate uh, by your design with these power agents. Well, the fact that they're the fact that they're um, they're at, invited to the luncheon to begin with is a function of them having done some business with me or me or me seeking them out through somebody else in their real estate office. Um, as you know, I'm a strong proponent of cross-selling the listing agent. I believe that the listing agent in a marketplace is an agent who has good, solid business. The fact that they have listings shows that they're one of the more, more professional real estate agents in the marketplace. So I cross-sell the listing agents, and I invite them to these luncheons. And so the listing agent at this luncheon would be there, and if I have a big hitter at the luncheon, which I would always have one big hitter, uh, the listing agent would be there, and I would personally introduce uh, the brand, the new agent that comes to the meeting. I would personally introduce them to the big hitter as we'd all sit down. A lot of times I try to sit them next to the big hitter, somebody that's new, okay, a newbie would sit next to the big hitter. And you do that with, with place cards. It's very simple. You just little, do little tent cards, and you sit everybody around the table where you want them to be. Okay, so you get there a little early, you set up your tent cards, and everybody comes, and they know to take a place. And you put the, the, the newbie agent next to the big hitter, and that's a big wow for them, okay? And then you always want to make sure afterwards that you see if this was their first luncheon, your, your first success partner's lunch, you want to check with them afterwards before they leave and say, how'd you enjoy the luncheon? We're sure happy you were here. Um, did you get a chance to talk to Judy? Yeah, good. Well, you know, I was hopeful that you would. I don't know if you knew her or not, but uh, you know she's a top agent. And this, you know, got has lots of good ideas. I hope, I hope, uh, I hope you guys get to chat some more in the future. In other words, you're a facilitator, and you're letting them know when they're there that what you're attempting to do is you're attempting to give them opportunities that they wouldn't normally have, and they get it. Yeah, definitely awesome. Well, it validated, and you mentioned how Cialdini validated some of your own practices when you went through that study. Um, and you know, it, it, I love hearing you say the, the, the comments about the transactional relationship and how you have to give more than just great service if you want to secure that relationship long term. And, and one of the things that really resonated with me, some of my greatest successes in my origination practice, which I learned from you, Greg, were um, you know, when I spent the time to help develop and nurture a young agent and they became a strong performer over a couple of months and years, how much more loyal they were. I mean, they would go out of their way to do everything they could to get me on their deal. I mean, even when the borrower was pre-approved elsewhere. And that level of loyalty, because they recognized that I was a catalyst for them becoming a much stronger producing agent. In fact, one of them at one point actually mentioned to me the fact that, that, she, is, that she had made over $100,000 that year more based on following some of the advice and guidance that I'd given her. So guys, this is powerful stuff that uh, Greg is sharing with you. Um, we, we just have time for one more question, guys. Keep posting your questions. We will follow up with them after the call and make sure that we get all these answered. Um, and, and like I said, Greg has just scratched the surface on some of the stuff, but there's just one more quick, quick question I wanted to ask, Greg, which is to zero in on, with all of the training that's available on the Internet today, how do you offer training that continues to help, uh, that, does, that, that gives them something different or more than what they already have access to? Well, everybody has access. The difference is between having access and actually sitting in and doing it. 
And so what I do is I bring the training to them, okay? And so I bring it to them in a nice, in a nice social atmosphere in a luncheon, and we all go and eat. Again, you know, you break down barriers when you break bread with somebody. And, and so it's an event. Okay, I'm going to go to a success partner's luncheon with Greg Frost. You know, oh, okay. How do you get invited to those? Okay, well, I'll, I'll let you know sometime. Uh, okay, but, but anyway, it's one thing to have access to all kinds of training. We've got access, we got access to anything we want on the Internet. How many people are actually sitting down at their computer and actually saying, okay, from 1 to 2 today, I'm going to, I'm going to go study this? And, and, and nobody does it. You know, very few people. The, 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 the top realtors in your marketplace have done it. And so how many, how many are the top realtors in a marketplace? In my marketplace, there's 3,000 realtors. Only 354 of them sold four or more properties last year. Only 354 out of 3,000 3, had four or more closings last year. How many agents are really doing multiple transactions or making a living out of those 3,000? Uh, I'm going to tell you how many. Uh, I've, I've got a report. Uh, 88 realtors out of, out of 3,000 have 14 or more buyer-controlled sales last year, sold 14 or more. 88 agents out of 3,000 sold 14 or more. And the reason why I want to know that number is because I want to know which agents I need to be calling on. Because I, I don't have the resources to call on 3,000 agents, so I, want, I wanted to narrow it down. So I get a report, and I find out that 88 agents had 14 or more buyer-controlled sales to refer. Now, my, my premise is this. They can control 80% of those. They can refer 80% of them to me. So if they've, if they've got 14 buyer-controlled sales, I'm looking for 80%. That's 12. They've got one buyer-controlled sale per month minimum that they can refer to me. Only 88 agents have that many or more. So now I'm focused on the 88 agents in my, in my marketplace that have 14 or more buyer-controlled sales. And I'm, I'm going to do everything that I can to get those people together with me and with my people, okay, now that they're targeted. But, but you have to understand, there's only 88 of them. So that speaks to the fact that so few of them are, are high producers that produce enough for us to be, have any interest in them, in marketing them, and developing long-term relationships with them, deep relationships with them. Only 88 in my marketplace. So... So understand that, that there's a whole bunch of them out there. In my marketplace, there's 2,912 of them that, are, that aren't even hardly surviving in, in real estate. So they're certainly not plugging into Internet training. They're not sharpening their skills. They're not doing any of those things they should be doing to get better. So my, my whole premise is I'm going to bring it to them in the form of a lunch and learn, which is nice, they get a free meal, they learn a few things, they sit down with uh, like-minded people, uh, I build consensus, I build consistency, I build authority, I trigger reciprocity, it all works around a meal and around a training luncheon. Yeah, you know, the amazing thing here, Greg, is I see you do this all the time, um, you know, you use the principles of influence to sell them on showing up at the event, you use the principles of influence to help them understand the benefit of plugging in to the ideas and starting to implement, you use the principle of influence to better them first. That's where this whole concept of ethical influence, I think, ultimately comes from. It comes from the purity of your intention and that whole thing that started today's call with reciprocity. Be willing to give and serve first and see what happens in life. And, and I think the really cool thing that you just articulated, which I pretty much assumed would be your answer, um, is, is, you know, it, it, you know, we interrupt them and help them understand what they don't know because we care enough to point it out for them. Because we, none of us know what we don't know until somebody cares enough to point it out to us. So, all right, guys, uh, great questions. It's been a wonderful program. Uh, Mr. Greg, you guys, I just want to give you a preview on something um, that I'm really excited to announce today. And, and we will be getting you a lot of additional information and follow-up. I don't want to go into a big sales pitch right now, but just I want you to save the date. Um, Greg has agreed, and we have put together a schedule and plan to launch a six-part series where Greg is going to go in-depth into each of these six principles that he's previewed for you today. And we are going to work through how to actually apply them to the daily day activities that you do. 
Um, and we'll be launching that series starting on March 13th. It'll be scheduled at 11 o'clock Central, 10 o'clock Mountain, 9 o'clock Pacific, noon Eastern. So you get all four time zones covered there. Be checking the website. The website is just not quite up yet. We were testing it again yesterday, and it was at, it, it, it was up up and then it had a glitch, so we'll be fixing that over the next week. Be watching for email announcements to come out shortly here in the next week about that series called the Maximum Influence Series, where Greg's going to be walking us through in great detail exactly what you need to know about how to get these principles applied in your daily basis. Um, all right, the, uh, the next thing that I want to share with all of you is, you know, I posted in the Q&A uh, or in the chat section just a few minutes ago, if you'd like take advantage of the uh, information that Greg has offered today. Uh, simply go to greg at gregfrost.com, G-R-E-G -E at G-R-E-G-F-R-O-S-T dot com. One of the reasons I love working with you, Greg, you have the easiest but name to spell in the business. I constantly get frustrated with my own name being such a mouthful. Uh, but anyway, uh, second thing that I wanted to introduce all of you to is remember that this is an ongoing series of webinars. Uh, if you want to check out more about upcoming webinars with the Maximum Performance Series, go to www.mxlcoach.com slash webinars and check out the upcoming schedule of future events. Uh, next week's program uh, is being offered to you by Ms. Brad Korn, uh, who's going to be talking about how to stay top of mind when out of office. And, and of course, as many of you have come to know, Brad is a master of automating personal touch in communications. Uh, if you like what you've heard today, if you would like some direct support and how to actually make it happen in your business, uh, a lot of you have been asking about, um, and, and I'm sure many of you are wondering how to get more information about the coaching program and how to understand whether coaching, what coaching could do for you in your business. One of the best ways we found to do that over the years is to offer what we call a strategy session. It's no cost, no obligation, true coaching strategy session where we will take you through how to implement a lot of the ideas or concepts that you've heard today in your daily business with one particular challenge or one opportunity that you'd really like to get some help or support with. From there, uh, we'll leave the room in that conversation for a little bit further. If it is something you want to pursue deeper, uh, that will be the best forum for being able to talk through what, what of our programs are available to you and what makes the most interest. If you'd like to take advantage of one of our strategy sessions, you can simply go to our website, uh, mxlcoach.com slash strategy, and sign up directly from the website for that. Or you are welcome also to post your request in the Q&A section of today's webinar. Um, keep in mind, we only have a handful of these sessions available each week because it's based on the coach's capacity uh, and time schedules. So uh, they are filled on a first-come, first-served basis. Sometimes we do end up having to book them out two to three weeks in advance. Uh, so you want to make sure you get on, uh, on the on board with getting one of those booked and make sure you block it out in your schedule so you make sure you show up when you're scheduled. Um, and if you'd like one of those no-cost, no-obligation strategy sessions to check out what coaching can do for you, simply go to uh, go ahead and post in the Q&A section of the web uh, platform here the best phone number and email address for us to reach you so we can get that event scheduled. All right, the last thing that I want all of you to think about is we wouldn't be coaching if we weren't providing an action plan. And so the practical reality is I want you to think about the one most valuable thing you've heard in today's program. What is that one thing that you want to implement in your business right away? You'll have the recording to refer back to later. You'll have the ability to reach out to a coach or to Greg and get some additional help if you want. Um, but what was the one thing? Just pick one. You'll come back and get the rest later, but pick one. The second thing you need to decide is what action do you need to take right now to make this a part of your daily business over the next couple of weeks. Thirdly is you want to make a commitment to timing. By when do you want to have this action item implemented in your daily business? And then the bonus activity here is who are you going to ask to hold you accountable to following through on that promise? Over the previous weeks, you guys have heard me talk about the running buddy analogy. How much harder is it to not get up and exercise if you know you got your buddy on your doorstep at 5.30 to take you jogging? It's kind of that whole concept. So pick somebody that you trust, that you respect, that you're going to feel guilty if you break a promise to them. Make a promise to them about what you want to do and by when you want to do it and ask them to follow up with you and hold you accountable. 
So, uh, guys, that's pretty much it. Um, with uh, the, the last piece of today's webinar, um, I'm going to leave it to Greg. Uh, if you want, you know, thank you again so much for your um, your time, your energy, getting up at geez, 5:30 in the morning, uh, especially when you're on vacation in Maui. That's amazing <laughs> that you would do that for us. Um, but uh, I, I guess I, I just my my heart goes out to you, and and so grateful for the uh, the guidance that you've provided me over the years. Um, and I wish I wish there was a way to let you hear the applause on the back end of this thing if I asked them, everybody to give you a round of applause because you've shared some incredible information with us today. Uh, with that in mind, Greg, if you have any final thoughts you'd like to share with the audience, uh, I'd love to give you that opportunity one more time. Well, thanks, Eric, and it was great being with all of you. And just remember, if it is to be, it's up to thee, all right? Uh, you got to take the first step. And uh, don't be afraid to take it. Just Just do something. Okay, like Eric's trying to do, he's trying to coach you into making that move. Uh, do something and understand this. Uh, you got, we all just watched the Super Bowl, right? Uh, all of those athletes on the Super Bowl, most every single one of those, those elite athletes, we talk about elite athletes, has a personal coach, either a personal psychological coach or a personal specific training coach. And these are coaches other than the coaches that, that are on the team, other than the coaches that the team provides. Understand that the elite, if you want to be elite at what you do, you've got to make a decision to be elite. You've usually got to make an investment. And, it, and, it's, and it's something where you make a decision and you say, all right, I want to be better than everybody else at this, and I'm going to be better. My, my objective when I got started was I wanted to be the best originator in Albuquerque, New Mexico. Then I wanted, once I attained that, I wanted to be the best originator in the state of New Mexico. Then as I attained that, I wanted to be the best originator in the United States. And I set about on a quest to do that. And guess what? I'm sitting in little Albuquerque, New Mexico at the time with $88,000 average loan amounts. And I was hitting the top 20 on the, on the Mortgage Originator Magazine top producer list every single year for years and years and years. Uh, I'm, doing, I'm doing 60, 70 units a month. Uh, and, and, and everybody at the time thought that was just amazing because nobody could do that. Yes, you can. You can do it if you want to. And, uh, and Albuquerque was no boomtown market. Let me tell you something. This is a steady little market, small community, uh, you know, 500,000 people. But we were able to achieve phenomenal success because we set about to achieve phenomenal success. I just had a vision in my head that I wanted to be the best. And I started availing myself of the training that was out there, of the coaching that was out there. I had a personal coach, a personal performance coach, in my business since 1988. Okay, so those of you that are listening, if you if you if you if you want it, okay, you can get it. Okay, just take the steps, make a move. Okay, and and plug into a, a brain trust that can help you step over all the obstacles that many of us uh, came in contact with. We can step you over those obstacles because we've all we've all hit those obstacles before. And um, you know, make a decision. Make a decision for excellence. And uh, if it is to be, it's up to thee. And I hope uh, many of you choose to ride along with us on this training. Yeah, awesome, awesome, awesome. Well, Greg, thank you again so much for your time. Um, I'll let you get back to your family and and your your rest and relaxation time. Uh, we'll talk again when you get back. Um, I know Jennifer has something scheduled for us. Thank you again for joining us. For those of you still remaining on the call. All, if you'd like to go ahead and take advantage of one of those no-cost, no-obligation strategy sessions with one of our particular coaches, uh, you are welcome to go ahead and post that request in the Q&A directly. Give us the phone number and email address that's going to be easiest to reach you so our team can call out to you and get that scheduled. Um, and then uh, we'll, you know, I'll have that opportunity to be able to help you with implementing these things in a more direct one-on-one -on -one situation. Uh, looking at the specific unique situations that you each are faced with. Um, again, watch for the upcoming information uh, that we'll be hopefully getting out to you later this week about the six-part series that will kick off in uh, the second week of March, uh, that uh, maximum, performance, or maximum Influence series that Greg Frost is going to be doing for us on, uh, starting on March 13th of 2013 at, like I said, 11 o'clock Central, 9 Pacific. Do the time zone conversion for yourself if those don't fit. Again, thank you all for attending. Um, 
I'm going to go ahead and probably sign off for audio here in just a few seconds, but I uh, did want to give you all one last chance to go ahead and get any final questions that you'd like our team to follow up with you on after the event. Uh, again, thank you, uh, big thank you to Greg Frost. If you'd like information directly from Greg, simply just email him, greg at gregfrost.com, and he or his team will get back to you to answer your questions, and we'll go from there. Uh, otherwise, uh, you know, if you do want one of those strategy sessions, please go ahead and make sure you let us know the best phone number and email address where our team can reach you here in the next few minutes to get that appointment scheduled for you uh, with one of our coaches. And uh, again, if you do have any additional questions that you've now thought of as Greg has shared some of this great wisdom with you, go ahead and post those in the Q&A. And if, even if we didn't get your question during the live part of today's program, uh, we will be following up with you after the fact to make sure we get those questions answered. All right. I'm going to give you about two more minutes or so here to go ahead and get the information requests posted. Uh, again, if you are interested in one of those strategy sessions, please make sure you give us the best phone number to reach you as well uh, so that our team can go ahead and call you and coordinate uh, the kind of the logistics of getting that session scheduled. Uh, Otherwise, if you have any other additional questions related to today's program or anything else for that matter that you'd like to get some help or support on in your business, please let us know. We're always looking for ideas and topics for future webinars, uh, so feel free to go ahead and post those ideas and topics as well. All right. Thank you again, Greg. If you happen to still be on the line. Appreciate you joining me today. It was it was wonderful to talk to you as always, and I look forward to you know seeing you in just a week or two when we have our next opportunity to connect. Okay, guys, uh, by the way, one final thought or comment. Several questions were asked today about the uh, access to the recording of today's webinar. Uh, yes, recordings are available. They will be, uh, the video takes uh, you know about four hours of back-end work to get it rendered and posted properly on YouTube. Um, once that's available, we'll send out a follow-up email with a link to the copy of the video as well as any resources that uh, we can provide you for today. Um, and we'll get that out. Uh, usually we're able to get that done within a day or two. So. No later than 48 hours from now, you should receive an email in your inbox. Be watching for it with links and instructions on how to access the, uh, the recording of today's program. Otherwise, final questions or comments, go ahead and get those posted into the Q&A at this time. Um, if you have, uh, you know, we are going to be, like I said, and then of course, if you do, would like one of those no cost and obligation strategy sessions, go ahead and post that in now. Otherwise, I'm going to go ahead and sign off the audio. I'll leave the, uh, the chat and Q&A open for just a few more minutes so that people can get those final questions or comments posted. Otherwise, thank you again for a great program today. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for investing time in your own. As Mrs. Feldman has Greg shared the value and power of that. Um, it's just at the close of our webinar here. I'll be jumping off at this point. Uh, I'll leave the Q&A open for just a few more seconds so we can get this information gathered, OK? Have a great week, everybody, and we look forward to seeing you next week on the next installment of this program.